But on New Year's Day, no one forgets what's at stake. The signs throughout the Superdome say it strongly. This is the battle for number one. Football supremacy, all the marbles. For this is the 43rd Sugar Bowl Football Classic from the Superdome in New Orleans. It's the Pittsburgh Panthers battling the Georgia Bulldogs, the champions of the East against the champions of the Southeastern Conference. The Sugar Bowl joyfully greets a sellout throng to the nation's largest indoor sports arena. From every corner of the nation, they've come to watch Pitt, ranked first in the nation, laying its national championship on the line against Georgia, fifth ranked and determined to take those high honors away from the Panthers. This Sugar Bowl marks the beginning of an annual appearance in the Sugar by the SEC champions. Sugar Bowlers look with pride on the new contractual arrangement, one they hope that will last for many, many years. In another departure from the past, the Sugar Bowl this year selected its queen from SEC member schools, and she's very lovely Amy Woodyard of Georgia. Well over 70,000 stand proudly as the participating Georgia and Pitt bands form the letters USA and the national anthem is sung by Miss Margie Joseph. There's nothing left to do now but play and Dooley's Bulldogs storm onto the field. Followed by Johnny Majors and his undefeated Pitt Panthers. The Sugar Bowl and National Championship combined are now about to be settled as Al Levitt kicks off for Georgia. It's a long high one deep into the end zone to be down. On the first play from scrimmage, quarterback Mike Cavanaugh here hands off to All-American Tony Dorsett. And the first four yards belong to Dorsett in Pittsburgh. Ben Zambezi brings him down. Matt Cavanaugh pitching to Dorsett again. But this time Bulldog Jeff Lewis is waiting. Let's see it again from a different angle now. Pitt must punt. And Swider has the job. He booms it away, 41 yards down the field. Mitchell has it out to the 32. Georgia's ball. The quarterback, Ray Goff. Goff on the option, sweeps the right side, picks up three. After a loss on the next play, Goff now has to go to the air. There's no one open. So Ray runs up the middle for eight yards, but he is short of the first down. Bucky Diltz now punting deep. Taylor on the receiving end. Backs up and makes a catch and brings it out to the pit 20. And the Panthers prepare for a key drive. Cavanaugh gets it going, handing off to Pittsburgh's Mr. Everything, Dorset for five yards. Four plays and a first down later. Cavanaugh hands to Walker for six yards up the middle. Now a rare moment for Dorset. He takes a pitch out from Cavanaugh around the left side. Fighting loose from tacklers. Fumbles out of bounds on a hit from Ronnie Swopes. The Panthers prove that the pass is very much part of their game as Cavanaugh restores momentum. Here's a 13-yard completion to split in Gordon Jones. It is on the move. And Cavanaugh is leading them. Matt spots another man open. This time it's Walker. And he rambles up the middle for 36 yards. He goes down to the Georgia 10-yard line. and go. Cavanaugh on the option, pitching to Dorsey. Four yards he gathers around the right side. From 
the six yard line. Cabanon now keeps and speeds to the left into the end zone. Pittsburgh is on the board. Touchdown. The junior quarterback, a very happy young man. by Carson Long is true and Pitt leads 7-zip. The veteran Long kicks off. George's McClendon is waiting to receive. The Bulldogs and Panthers fail to move on next possessions. We resume action with Georgia on their 22 late in the period. Goff with the snap. Rolling out to the right. He's going to keep it and he scampers for 12 yards as the clock winds down with Pitt out in front. Pittsburgh has possession as the second quarter starts and Kavanaugh is again on target. Over the middle this time to Willie Taylor for 39 big yards as he breaks from the initial tackle and scampers for big yardage. The dogs stiffen and they force a 54 yard field goal attempt by Long. It's a long kick but it's just too short. Georgia gets the ball determined to get moving. Goff searches for an open man, decides to run instead. Back up the middle he goes for eight big yards. Now Goff once again staying with the running game, this time handing to Kevin McLee for 11 yards and first down at the 39. But Pitt's defense is up to the job and they force Dilt back to punt. This time a super boot. 53 yards in the dome. Six plays later, an interception sets Pitt up with a first and 10 at their 26. Kavanaugh on target. This time 15 yards to Taylor. Dorsett up the middle, but Zambezi and Swoops are waiting as Georgia keys on the great star of the Panthers. Kavanaugh upstairs once more, this time to Gordon Jones. Jones breaks a key tackle and literally flies into the end zone. 59 yards with a touchdown. Let's see that touchdown once again from the stadium floor. Here's the throw. Jones has it. Almost caught from behind. Walks out of the tackle. The rest of the way he scampers to score. Long boots the point after. Pittsburgh is on top, 14 to nothing. Coach Vince Dooley tries a new quarterback, Matt Robinson. But Matt's passes, well, they're not effective either. And this one is picked off by linebacker Jim Kramer. And the Panthers are on the prowl again. Majors on the sidelines planning strategy. Here is Kavanaugh back to pass. This time for 10 yards to tight end Jim Corbett. At the pit, 43 on first and 10. Walker gains five at left tackle. Three plays later, and the great Tony Dorsett shows his stuff. He takes Kavanaugh's pitch. And look at this fella run. 22 yards around the left end. Mark Mitchell brings him down at the Georgia 22. Let's watch that waltz again. Three plays later, 
Kavanaugh is back to throw once more. Taylor is the target and it's good for 13. After Walker gets to, Kavanaugh goes to touchdown Tony for the coup de grace. There he goes around right in and the Panthers are now threatening the runaway as he goes in to score the touchdown. Touchdown Tony Dorsey. Long kicks the point after. It's 21 to nothing. Long of Pittsburgh kicks off to Georgia. That's Washington deep. At the five. Out to the 10. To the sidelines. To the 15. To the 20. To the 25. He's wrestled down at the 28. A 23 yard return as the Bulldogs try desperately to get back in the game. Robinson here. Fighting for his life. Rolls to the right. Passes to Steve Davis. The first Georgia reception of the game is good for 19. But moments later, another Robinson aerial finds the wrong hands. There's a long one, and Leroy Felder is on the other end, intercepting, sending the Panthers into the dressing room far out in front. halftime at the Sugar Bowl and in the best tradition of the New Orleans classic the presentations prove outstanding the Pittsburgh band is first on the field 171 strong under the baton of Don Howard the marching Panthers pride themselves as the best in the East and they have little difficulty proving the fact the pit band entertaining a sellout throng at the Sugar Bowl outstanding marching units in the SEC, a conference that prides itself on superior halftime performances. Dr. Roger Dans has his 300-member unit in excellent sound and keyed to a sharp precision marching drill. Just as the football squads intently prepare for the game action, so do their band counterparts, preparing for the halftime with equal energy and a determination to come off of the field for the adulation deserving a winner. Resistance of the always exciting Sugar Bowl halftime is a special appearance by New Orleans' own Pete Fountain, one of America's most gifted musicians. He thrills the Sugar Bowl audience with the brilliance of his clarinet, backed by the world-famous Pete Fountain Band. The music ends and the battle resumes on the Mardi Gras turf of the Superdome as Long kicks off to Georgia. Pitt All-American defender Al Romano stops quarterback Greg Goff. Georgia can't dent Pitt's defense. And Diltz is forced to punt again. 46 yards it goes this time to Taylor. Matt Cavanaugh at the controls again and Pittsburgh makes one of his very, very few mistakes. Walker fumbles, Kraft recovers for the Bulldogs at the pit 25. With the end zone in sight for the first time, Goff keeps. He picks up six yards on the left side. But again, Pitt's rugged defenders stiffen as Goff drops back to throw and overthrows the receiver Pollard. Then Goff hands on a reverse to Davis on the next play. Davis pitches to McClee around the right end. But the Panthers aren't surprised, and the game is only good for two. With a fourth and goal at the Panther seven, Georgia goes for the field goal. 
as Levitt puts the Bulldogs on the scoreboard. Georgia 3, Pitt 21. But the day belongs to the unbeaten Panthers. Late in the third period, Kavanaugh cranks up a drive from his own seven as Walker gains four. Watch out, everybody. Here comes Mr. Football USA. Heisman Trophy winner Dorset goes off right tackle. And look at that fella turn on the speed. 67 yards. Only a saving tackle by Johnny Henderson keeps it from being another touchdown. There he is, number 33, missed a touchdown, Tony Dorsett. Dorsett's super run sets up another field goal attempt for Carson Long. This one is 42 yards long, and it's good. Pittsburgh leads 24 to 3. On the last play of the third quarter, Goff brings life back to the Southern cause with a 19-yard sweep around right in. The quarter ends with Pitt in front. The determined Bulldog quarterback pitches now to McLee for six yards. McLee again keeps George's hopes alive, taking this pass on the right side for 13 yards as he breaks tackles. Two plays later, it's bad news again for the Bulldogs, as Goff's pitch is deflected by Leroy Felder, and Felder recovers for the Panthers at the pit 27. With Pitt in possession, it's showtime again for the great Dorsey. This time, he's off around the right end for 22 yards before Krug and Woods can bring him down. plays later long tries another pit field goal 49 yards but this time it's wide to the right Georgia's miseries multiply Goff on third and seven fumbles the snap Chesley has it for Pitt at the Georgia 22 Kavanaugh now set to take to the air he finds Jones for eight yards. On fourth and two, Long comes in for another field goal shot. From 31 yards out, it's good. And Pitt moves out in front 27 to three. All that's left now is to watch Tony Dorsett establish a new Sugar Bowl rushing record. And in these three separate plays, Tony completes piling up the remarkable record-setting achievement of 32 carries, 202 yards gained, and 76,117 Sugar Bowl fans give the All-American a standing ovation. It shows its supremacy. The Panthers are truly number one in America, the nation's best football squad in 1976, and the Sugar Bowl champions 27-3 over a game Georgia squad. Panther fans roar their approval throughout the halls of the Superdome. Head coach Johnny Majors proudly accepts a trophy, emblematic of the great victory from Sugar Bowl President Harry England. And one of the first to congratulate Majors is Georgia's very talented leader, Vince Dooley. In press row, meanwhile, votes are tabulated for the most valuable player. The winner, junior quarterback Matt Cavanaugh. The 43rd Sugar Bowl is history. A national champion is crowned. New records established. College football at its best. In the best of the bowls, the sugar. How sweet it is.